The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look at the German DAX and also the FTSE. You can see both of those have had some nice patterns, certainly tradable if you're up in the middle of the night. Folks, I don't know if you know this or not, but we had about an 800-point swing in the Dow Jones yesterday after the close. We dropped 250, went up 250, down 250. I mean, I hadn't seen anything like that since I traded pork bellies. But uh, it was a tweet master field is what it was. And, of course, those of you that uh, subscribe to my tweet service, you know that we get those tweets ahead of time, and it's very, very valuable in your timing when you know that they're coming out. So uh, hang in there with your subscription because it's looking pretty good. Here's one that looks really interesting, folks. Last night, uh, we also hit a really nice uh, ABCD pattern in the uh, – the crude oil, you'll notice that we got down to that 51 and change. We've had a pretty good rally off of that, so it's going to be interesting whether we can pop through to get to that second level or not. Now, we do have Norm Winsky as our guest at the half-hour break, but let's review what we were looking at yesterday. Remember, the trade of the day that I had on yesterday was a trade looking at the soybeans, and I just wanted to show you you know, some of the scientific, well, some of the research stuff that I do. You notice that the AP BCD pattern here on the March beans went up to uh, uh, 957. The high was 957 and a half. And if you remember, we were showing you the AI, the neural network program that we use, the artificial intelligence, and it showed that it was going to top. And this is what it was supposed to do for the day. Now, remember, I had this a day ahead of time. And so what I wanted to do was to find out if it was going to work. So here's what happened during the day. We're going to review a couple of these just to show you that sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You just never know. But no one else knows that either. All right, here's, a, here's what happened uh, right after the open in the first uh, – a couple hours of trading, you'll notice that the market went up and made its high pretty much where, where it should have. Uh, this happens to be the uh, November bean con contract, not the March bean contract. And then let's let's review it at the end of the day, and we can see you know how it actually held up, and you'll you'll be able to see that it did pretty good considering that you know we had it a day ahead of time, but uh, it had a 12 cent move in it, which was good, and so it acted relatively nicely. Now, if you remember, we were also looking at a couple other markets. One, of course, was the crude oil market, and we'll get that one up here in just a second if I can get this thing out of the way here. And there's the crude oil effect. It was happening just as we were on the air, as I recall. Let's get this up here to take a quick look at it. You'll be able to see that was the crude oil forecast. And you notice that we went way down below 52 uh, on the crude yesterday uh, as those numbers came out. So, And the other one that we looked at, of course, was the gold market. And what we said on the gold market is that what we want to do is to wait until – Around 11.30 was the best time to sell the gold, if that's uh, what it was supposed to be. So what we did was we came in and we waited till 11.30, and we came up, and you'll be able to see that we were sitting right at a spot where you didn't have to risk very much at that point. And from that point, folks, uh, gold went all the way down to uh, 15.07 and then had a uh, pretty good move uh, you know, back up because of all the news that was going on. And believe me, that was enough for everybody last night. I mean, they just were, they were just really rocking and rolling. Now, I had a request to talk about uh, head and shoulders patterns because the comment that I made yesterday about the pattern that Dennis Gartman had done. Here is basically, folks, if you're going to do a head, and I just, the one that I was looking at this morning, this is one I was watching. You'll notice here, this is over the last two days, I'm just looking at the 15 minute chart. That's what I usually look at when I'm, trying to set up a trade for the day. You'll notice that from the highs to the low, the left shoulder to the right shoulder, I drew the line across. They're exactly the same price. 
and it took the time from the right shoulder to the head and the head to the left shoulder exactly. Now, that's what Dr. Andrew Lowe wrote about in his book. This is what a head and shoulder was all about. Now, all I do is as I'm watching these, I'm watching these smaller patterns that line up as they come through. And as I come up, you'll see that we had a nice little A, B, C, D, Gartley pattern coming in at the right time of the right shoulder, which was really nice and say, well, this is where gold should start to go down. And at the same time that I was looking at that, I was looking at the uh, artificial intelligence program that was telling me that, uh, by golly, it looks like that we should be down until 1030 this morning. And so far, that's what's happened. Now, it doesn't always work that way. But, you know, when it does, it gives you a really warm, cushy feeling. So uh, that's the whole thing that we're watching. Now, what I'm going to do today is because this is such a, a wonderful day in the neighborhood, October the 10th. Let's get out. Oh, I believe. Is this Yom Kippur? Are you kidding me? Wow, it is. No, yesterday was, oh, my God, I missed the high holy day. Holy cow. That's not good, Larry. All right, here's the forecast that we have for today. I did this a few hours ago. Well, forecast was done. I just I printed it out. You'll notice that the best time will be uh, around 11.30 if you're interested in a trend change. So watch the stock market at 11.30. If it's making a major low, it's going to be a buy. If it's making a high, it's going to it should be a high. So that's right now. It's following the high forecast. But, you know, we can get to one of these spots. And because it's time-related, it's not uh, – it's not price related. You have to look at the exact time. You must wait for those times because those are the ones that tell you whether you're going to be, you know, right in the ballpark or not. So sort of pay attention to that if, you, if you're interested in, in doing that. I'm thinking of doing some type of a test program with some of you guys to see if you're able to use it because I, I well, I, I already know that it works pretty good because I've seen it work over and over again. It doesn't work all the time, but it's, it's certainly better than seven out of 10 and it gives you a huge edge because you don't have to risk very much, you know, at that particular form. These are all yes, sir. It's not a dumb question, Tucker. I should, uh, you know, I've been doing this for so long. I just assume that you guys are reading my mind, which is pretty, re pretty e easy reading. Uh, no, it's all Eastern times. Even when, uh, even when I do the European and Asian section, I do those also. Now, I did a show yesterday for uh, stock charts, which I had got some really interesting information I wanted to share with you folks. This is a uh, one of the gentlemen that was on the show with me, uh, Dave Keller, had a really interesting chart that I'd like to share with you. This was the uh, different uh, – these are the advanced decline lines. The first one you can see is the S&P. The next one you can see uh, is the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. And then the third one, of course, is the uh, small caps. And you'll notice that how all of these advanced decline lines are turning down. Folks, that's not a bullish sign. That, that really isn't. And uh, we're seeing it in a lot of different things. So uh, keep in mind that uh, it certainly looks like it could be a little bouncy. We're going to take a little break here, I think, pretty soon. And then we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things that we need to uh, discuss. And uh, we and I'll make those up as we go along. But uh, if you have any questions, and Al said the lines are jammed right now, but you might be able to get through 877-927-6648. That's the main thing that you want to keep looking at. We want to look at natural gas next, folks. Uh, that, that one's the one that's going to be really interesting. So when we get back from this break, we're going to take a look at the old natural gas. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of natural gas, and the reason why is uh, it is at a really critical level, but unfortunately, it's not following through uh, like we'd like for it to sue. We, we hit that uh, 223 level. Now, this uh, uh, th th this is one that it's really got to hold that 223, because if it doesn't hold, folks, this is going to be a major failure, and you don't want to get involved uh, you know, with that. Now, this is an hourly chart, so this is what's been happening since the middle of the night, and uh, early this morning in Europe, it did hold the uh, 223 level. We're slightly above it, so that's really not very much of a thing. But we go if we go below 223, these are these are the ones that you've got to be really careful of because when they fail, they fail badly, and that's where you get into problems with uh, you know with some things that don't work, and that's what you don't want to see happening. Now, I wanted to show you just a perfect example here of a, of a pattern that looks like it's ready to fail, but it hasn't yet, and that's here uh, with the uh, with the Bitcoin. Oh no! Do you tell me that I got knocked out of the room? I hope you folks can hear me okay. But uh, oh, I don't know what I did wrong there. But we'll just get this chart for Bitcoin put up here, and we'll be able to take a look at it. Since we can't show a chart, what I'm going to be doing here is talk a little bit about the mental part of this. Yesterday, I talked about not watching the screen, and it's really not your friend, folks. It's your mortal enemy, so you don't want to be watching that machine as you're trading, because uh, if you're following it, you're watching the dollars that you're either making or losing, and believe me, you're watching it more when you're making.
making than when you're losing. When you're losing, it's painful, so you don't look at how much you're losing. So that's another reason why watching that machine doesn't really help you very much. And the only way you can get around it, folks, is if you use baby steps. In other words, I'm not going to watch the machine for 10 minutes today, and then you'll try it four or five days after 10 minutes. You'll, you'll try it for 30 minutes. If you get to 30 minutes, you're in pretty good shape. That means you only have to watch the machine you know, half a dozen times during the day, and it's not going to affect your trading very much at all so that's the that's the real the real key to, to doing that is to, you got to do it by baby steps though there's just no other way that uh, you can do it without that so I think I got finally got back in the room so I'm able to see if we have any uh, questions or anything like that and I do not believe we do right now so let's uh, just uh, yeah, uh, A, B, C, J, K. I don't know what that means. That's a big 10 4 L. I'm back in, so we're all right. I don't know how I got knocked out, but the technical part of this is uh, easy enough to do. I hope you were able to hear me all during that time. I imagine you were because I was on Skype, but uh, one only knows. We'll have to be able to see. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move on here, and we'll uh, get up here to talk a little bit about this euro because we're getting we're getting up here to the price in the euro that we've been waiting for, folks. Let's move up here just a second, and uh, here we go. You'll see here's where we are. This is a daily now. I sent out these a little earlier because we're getting up near that 1040 level, uh, which is going to be near that 61 percent retracement today, and we've been rallying for five days. So this is going to be the moment of truth in the proverbial euro because up around this 1040, 1050, 11040, 11050 level, uh, that's a pretty good 61% uh, retracement. We're in a downtrend. You can see that by the b bold black lines. There's no question that's what we're doing. And that means that that U.S. dollar has backed off from its high at 99, which has been a major, major resistance level. So the key to watch here, folks, is if the euro goes popping above 11080. If it does that, that means that U.S. dollar is starting to move to the other side of the fence, I mean, heading down, and that might have some impact on maybe other things, too, That because uh, I don't watch the correlations in these things. I just look at the chart that I'm trading. That's the main thing that I'm trying to focus on, is to see which one is uh, supposedly, you know, going to work. That's uh, the bottom line. Okay, uh, someone asked a question about the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the tariff stuff. Folks, I don't watch that stuff. I mean, that's just, they tweet a tweet or give whatever. You know that they're all, they're all full, they're all a bunch of baloney, and you can't trust anybody anymore in the news. I mean, no, it doesn't make any difference what country you're in. It's the same thing. Do you know that Singapore has passed a law that if you put out fake news, it's going to be a $1 million U.S. fine, actually Singapore dollars, which are worth more, and also 10 years in prison, mandatory. That'll put a stop to the lying, folks. <laughs> so we'll see. Now, the tweets, nothing can stop that. That's uh, I just don't understand why. Twitter hasn't made uh, a bigger impact in the stock. I mean, it's still hanging around 34, 35, I think, and it never really did very much when you stop at Facebook and Google and all the others. But here again, that's uh, many, many levels above my pay grade. Let's quickly look at this U.S. dollar again, because uh, this is the one we were chatting about just now. And if we get above this level here, above that 99 and change level, then we got a chance. But we got a chance of a real major ABCD double top in here. And if you remember, uh, those two red boxes on the left there, on the left side there, they're marked with 1.618. Therein lies the rub, folks. So let's keep that one in mind. It's going to be real interesting to see if it's uh, if it's going to hold that level or not. But uh, we need to pay uh, close attention to that as we, as we walk through and see what's going on. The other one, the other one that we've been talking about for quite some time has already told us that, yes, boys and girls, we've made a major top in here. And that is this Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. Here are the notes we were looking at just the other day. We have now broken below those lows at 131, and uh, that's telling us that we are heading down to the next level. That doesn't mean we might not go back and test it again. All I know is that top is in for a while. And remember, the open interest was dropping uh, during that time, and that's not a good sign. Whenever you have people leaving the business or, you know, not willing to play, then that makes it a little more difficult. Uh, we're seeing the same thing. And, the, the, of course, the wildness that we had last night in the futures market will not be uh, 
brought to our attention until tonight because that happened, you know, after those figures came out when we had those really wild swings. So, and boy, we had wild swings. I mean, we had 25 point swings in the S&P, uh, just like bellies used to run 10, 10 points up and 10 points down and end the day unchanged. So uh, this was uh, pretty crazy that we saw last night. Uh, whether that means anything technically, I'm sure it does, but, you know, we haven't seen anything quite that bad in, in, in a long time, but uh, we're very, very close. We'll be able to see. Uh, Terry's telling us that the natural gas inventory is today. Terry, all I know about that inventory is if we go below 223 in that Christmas natural gas, that is not going to be a good pattern because it's got all the right in the world to hold that level. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, therein lies the problem. So we'll watch that uh, very closely. Um, someone uh, asked a question about the gold market, folks. That gold, we got up to... Uh, 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 1522 yesterday uh, when the uh, market was going crazy. Uh, we went from 1522 down to 15 uh, to 1507 without any trouble at all. So we'll, we'll be able to see. Yes, it's very cold in the upper western United States. Uh, I think it, it's it's actually I think it's darn near. For, it's already freezing up in Minneapolis where Rich is, and uh, the the Dakotas are very very heavily hit with uh, with snow. So uh, maybe global warming is only going to be working in Florida and Arizona, but we'll be able to see. 15 degrees in Utah. Shut the front door and raise the rent, Pedro. That is cold. Wow. Holy moly guacamole. Let's stay tuned for the wizard from Florida. Norman, he calls it to the minute, Winsky. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Norm Winsky from Astro Trends on the line. Norm, are you there? Yes, sir, Larry. Good morning. Good morning to you. Why don't you share with us what you're looking at today? By the way, you had a very nice call the other day when the market made that uh, big bottom, whichever that bottom was. I remember the last time you were on, uh, something big happened that day. So several people alerted me to that fact. So let's I'll see what you got today. I'll probably be showing you a chart here, some charts here soon. I'm sure you will. Why don't you go ahead and start? All right. So here's the events. I was last on your show, I believe, on September 26th ahead of a new moon and we got a full moon coming up here on sunday we'll be talking about that in a little while and so i'm going to show you the different uh, planetary events occurred since then and how what uh, and the markets that were indicated and how they it all shook out you know so uh, you can see ac on my notes here that's after the close something was happening overnight we usually look at the next morning for the uh where the turn is you know so we have the uh <clears throat> have kind of two categories of, uh, actually three categories of planetary events. We have a geocentric, that's from the point of view of the Earth, heliocentric from the point of view of the Sun, and then for the uh, for things hap uh, connected to the U.S., like your U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar, I uh, use what's called a natal chart. That's where we take a snapshot of where the planets were uh, back on July the 4th, 1776, when the country was founded, and then look at the plants now and see if there's some sort of harmonic relationship between now and then. So for example, here are the first uh, thing I have listed here today. I have uh, 926 after the close, so over the over night, between the 26th and the 27th, we had the planet Uranus, 60 degrees from where Jupiter was on July the 4th, 1776. See, so it's a US Jupiter, and that's for, uh, it's only 60 degrees, so it's not a huge deal, but it's a moderate thing to, to pay attention to. That's for U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollars. That's your U.S. financials. We will be watching if it's a subject to the U.S. All right, now we have the, that weekend. It was a, we had a new moon in Libra, in the sign Libra, and it was at perigee. So, so theoretically, that should be pretty powerful. Also had other multiple lunar cycles converging that weekend. So I thought that was going to be a very powerful thing. And that was somewhat similar to the August 29th new moon but potentially more powerful with the multiple lunar cycles and a shift in emphasis to the sign of Libra. So, as I always say, we round up the usual suspects, and we're going to, and plus we, uh, because it's in a sign connected to a, a market, we'll we got, be running a special. So we got financials, grains, precious metals, and then because the Libra, we'll be looking at sugar, and then of course we always look at stocks and wheat. The sugar and wheat are your Libra markets. Okay, over that weekend, too, we had a cluster of other events. We had the moon's north node. Uh, that was 150 to the U.S. That's, so that's also we're going to be launching uh, for a moderate change of trend there. For U.S. stocks, deep bonds, U.S. dollar. And here's another one for the U.S. So these are piling up. So even though these were moderate things individually, when you put them all together, you may, maybe have something big. Oh, that was on the 30th. I apologize. That was Monday, Monday night, Monday night. Okay. All right. So then we're moving ahead here now. Uh, on the uh, second, the night of the second, this is probably the biggest event we had this whole time. We had, I think this may be what you were referring to, Larry. Uh, Pluto mm -hmm. was in Capricorn and turned direct. This is my one of my top things when the planets. What do what turn what's called uh, direct or retrograde. They stop, it's from the point of view of the Earth relative to the Earth. They're not physically doing that. If you look down at the solar system from above, you would not see them do this. It's only because of the relative motion of the Earth to these planets. But this is, in terms of the markets, 
This is one of the top things I have found that works really, really well. And it particularly when the outer planets, that's from Jupiter on out, uh, to go direct or retrograde, that's very, very powerful. But all the planets are important. So we have to uh, pay attention to those. So the, uh, with Pluto and in Capricorn, we're going to be watching cocoa, coffee, hogs, stocks, and tea bonds. We'll be showing you the charts here in just a moment. Now, also that more overnight, that's AC, so it's overnight or early the next morning. We had Mercury at aphelion, that's as Mer from the point of view of the sun. As Mercury goes around the sun, it's not a circle, it's an ellipse. And so there's a point where it's close and where it's far. And so we'll be watching, and the Mercury is connected to the grain, so we'll be looking at corn. And because it has a, it's an aphelion, it's a heliocentric thing, the sun thing. Also look at gold, oats. And uh, maybe we'll look at OJ or maybe not because nobody's paying attention to the OJ. Nobody trades it. Soybeans, stocks, and wheat. I think maybe I left the OJ chart out this time. And uh, hopefully uh, Lewis or, uh, will be too upset, you know. <laughs> All right, so then we have uh, geocentric Mars entering Libra the night of the third. And again, Libra is sugar and wheat, and we always look at stocks for everything. And then the night of the 7th, we have a big thing happening for the U.S. with the moon's north though lining up with the U.S. sun. That's in, uh, potentially very positive for the U.S. We'll be watching for a change in trend of U.S. stock T-bonds in the U.S. dollar. And here's some special dates I have for the for the stock market. You get to learn a little bit of GAN-style mathematics here. GAN loves square numbers. And also, we referred to there was music in the markets and so i have a little bit of a musical background when i was growing up and so i went and researched this got out my high school physics book and uh, got the math pythagorean you know pythagoras invented the mathematics for western music and so there's if you just continue what's called the chromatic scale mathematically you can get an unlimited number of numbers at, at, on, a, on a harmonic basis you know so anyway the six was uh, just for example, 3,866 days. That's a music math number from the major uh, March the, oh, oh, uh, it should be March the 6th, 2009. That was a typo there. Or it should be March the 6th. That was the big bottom there. Uh, could be, uh, could be, okay, that many, many mistake there by a day or so, one trading day. And then we, uh, all, the ninth, we had 19,600 days. That's 140 squared. Dan loves square numbers. From the um, oh, you know, only you and I are old enough to uh, remember this date, Larry. February the 9th, 1966, major top. I bet you remember that one, right, Larry? And, uh, sure. Uh, yeah. That that lasted for what was it about? Uh, quite a while, you know. That was several like, uh, years, yes. Several sure years. That was a yeah. big deal because it was the first time the Dow ever penetrated, at least for a moment, a thousand. You know, right? That's correct. And uh, but it didn't stay <laughs> it didn't stay up there, you know. It's like intraday it hit over a thousand and boom, right back down. It had a nosebleed, you know. October eighteenth, coming up here, we have sixteen thousand two hundred eighty four days. That's one hundred twenty eight squared, and also a music math number from the. Uh, oh yeah, you remember this one? I do too. That's when I kind of started my career. I went to. Uh, the CBOE to take my membership exam that uh, weekend. The weekend before that, uh, December the 9th, 74 was a major, major low. We had a big bear market from 73 to 74, and then we also I have I do Fibonacci time cycles. I have the third, the tenth, the eleventh, uh, and they come in up here the fifteenth uh, and the twenty third coming up. And okay, we gotta we gotta pay a few gotta pay a few bills. You betcha. We'll be right back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trend. If you're in a CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mugs program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, with Norm Winsky of Astro Trends. We have a question from one of our listeners over in the Ukraine. He would like to know your description of what aphelion is again. Uh, that's when Mercury, as it goes around the sun, is at its farthest point. It's not a circle. It's an ellipse, so there's a farthest point and a closest point. If it begins with A, it's a far. If it's close, it's pair or par, pair, P E R. Almost rhymes with far. Oh, wait, that almost rhymes with near. That's right. Peer okay. rhymes with near. There you go. Peer rhymes yeah. with near. Perihelion. Perihelion is near. Apihelion is far. Was that the apihelion thing with Mercury? Was that one of the things that Einstein worked on when he was doing his relativity, relativity thing with the Mercury? And the... I did something with Mercury, but I'm not sure what it was. Yeah. yeah. I know he got the idea from me, but I, I didn't say much because I thought it was yeah. a pretty good idea. But he followed through pretty well. Hey, go ahead, my friend. Fire away. All right. We're just looking at the past dates here over the last few weeks. So we're going to be looking at uh, I had a special date there for the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, S&P had a special date for the S&P the 30th, the 4th, and the 9th. And then we had some Astro dates for the 30th, 10-1, 10-3, and 10-8. And uh, we haven't done 14. That's coming up yet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go in alph alphabetical order for these charts to kind of keep them organized. And so there we go. There's Coco, their first alphabetical chart. And there's Pluto there, right there. We're one day early on the top in Coco. That's not too bad, you know, right? So there we go. For the one day, and then the, not too much price variance there to uh, give us a good entry. It's a it's a green arrow if we have uh, if we're off on our timing, or too much uh, where you get stopped out and lose money, then it's a red arrow. You know, we don't want to. You know, even sometimes our day early and it uh, moves too much and you would you know it'd be tough to make money on it. There's coffee, not too bad. That's a, you need a deep pockets to trade coffee. You know if you can't handle 
uh, two handles on coffee. You probably shouldn't be trading it. Uh, it's a handle there is three hundred three hundred seventy five dollars. But if you handled it, that, we got basically had the high day there. Uh, but you might have gotten in early in the day and then it popped up a couple handles and then boom, bound down and that's moved down. There's a worth about two thousand dollars. All right, so there you go. Here's corn. We had a little bit of oh, there's the moon for the corn. Of course, the the grains dance to the like to dance to the moon most of the time. Not all the time. They don't work all the time, but most whoa, of the time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean they don't work all the time, Norm? That's right. You don't shut the those. front door and raise the rent. Okay, you can still come on as our guest because you've hit right. some pretty good ones in the past. Don't mortgage grandma's house, right? <laughs> There we go. Here's corn coming down here now and making a beautiful low there. Look at that. You got no heat on that trade. You bought on the opening. It actually was a little bit lower over here, but a penny or two, who cares? There's your moon over that week, 27th weekend. You come in, you buy the opening. It's still in a kind of, you can see it's still kind of in a downtrend there. You buy it and boom, it's a rocket. You know, you got instant money. All right, then we come back, have a little pullback here into Mercury Perry. I'm sorry, Apahelion. And it makes a little bit of low there with a penny or so lower the next day. And then, boom, it goes up. You see that? So that worked out pretty well. Gold, I've, I can't, I, uh, in the past shows, I've told you gold is often a day late. You know, the moon, it, it takes an extra day for the moon, for the gold to turn. I did not put this in my official notes. It's kind of a thing I've told you in the past, kind of off the cuff. So I can't uh, can't do it. I can't, for their official record, I have to say there's the moon there on the 30th and on the opening you probably would have had too much price variance there you probably if you had any reasonable risk stop loss you probably would have got stopped out and lost money if you listened to me in past shows you would have known to try again the next day and then you would have been okay you know right uh, officially i got to make that a, lo uh, a loser that's a red arrow here's your hogs that uh, that's a pluto thing and it usually works. Uh, hogs usually like Pluto, but they didn't like Pluto this time, and it, it had no effect whatsoever. The market just kept going down, down, down. Oats were beautiful thing. Look at that. You got your low right there. You bought on the opening. Maybe pay up a penny or two, and then nice rally there. And then we had the uh, Mercury Apihelion there, and you're a day early on the top in the oats. Nobody trades the oats, but it's kind of – I think you have one or two pets there, Larry, that – Nobody trades, but they dance <laughs> to your your patterns very well, so it's kind of fun to watch them anyway, right? So here's silver, did the same thing as gold, and so we were day early on the silver, so you had to give that the red arrow. Here's your beans, beautiful on the greens. You bought the opening there right? on the, over the weekend, came in Monday morning, you bought the opening, and then boom, you went up. And then you had the pullback on the Mercury Epihelion, has a little small pullback there, and then it went higher. Here's your S&P. I had lots of dates, lots of stuff going for the S&P. Uh, to be brief, you can see how the green arrows are there, and that was a beautiful one there. Boom, down there, and then we had that. There's oh, there's the Pluto. Pluto, we, the market. You might remember uh, that was the thir morning of the third. Uh, we bottomed uh, Pluto that had been. Uh, went direct overnight between the second and the third. The market bottomed a few minutes after 10 o'clock in the morning. It was like a panic spike low there. I had said when I, you might remember, Larry, if you read my uh, updates, I sent out an update and I said, watch for a possible uh, pullback to uh, the August low at uh, 28.55. And it, the S&P cash got to 28.55.94. So I was off by 94 cents, Larry. I gotta, I gotta work on that. All right, then we go up here, and uh, that's pretty good. I was like just a little bit early here, and so forth. And then we had uh, did have kind of a miss here, where it didn't uh, quite work out. I forget why, but there you go. So mostly green arrows there in the S and P. Here's your sugar. Let's see, that was all. Oh, we were late here on when Mars went in the Libra. The, I'd already, the train had already left the station, so I had to be, make that a red arrow. T-bonds are at, all just about sideways. I don't like sideways. I, uh, this is all kind of based on Newton's law. Uh, for every action, there's an opposite reaction. And if you're going sideways, you're not going to – can't expect much reaction. So I just stay out of the market. Lane. Even though if I have a date there, it doesn't mean they're going to work. The market's going sideways. We don't, we don't do that, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Then the market started trending. We actually had a trend here into the state here. That was Pluto. Pluto is bonds. And there we go. We're right near the top there. Boom. That's, there's the, the, the day of Pluto direct. And then the next day we went a few ticks higher and then we topped out. And had a nice pullback. We had a U.S. Uh, oh yeah, we had a U.S. date there, and that was like a secondary top before we went down. Mm -hmm. Here's the wheat. The wheat was the only grain that did not cooperate that well. We had already cut, rallied. We'd already bottomed, and we were kind of mid-trend there. So I don't, I, I don't. Want, so that's a miss. We got to count that mm -hmm. as a miss. You might have, you know, you might have gotten fooled and gone short there, and then you would have gotten stopped out, you know. But mm -hmm. it did pull back here for good old Mercury uh, Appy Helium. Had a nice pullback low there, and I had something else here too. Oh, Mars went in Libra, Libra's wheat, and so we had a little pullback low here, and then we uh, had a rally. So that uh, we got, uh, you know, we we got uh, sort of vindicated there with the oh, there mm -hmm. okay on the wheat. Here we had the dollar. I had uh, I missed there uh, back on the 26th, but we had multiple indications for as it rallied. If it goes up, I want to sell it. If it goes down, I want to buy it. And so we had real multiple indications for a possible top there. We were day early on those. And then I had another one right there on the top day there on the 30th. And that was the top in the dollar. And then we had okay, another one over gotta pay, we got to pay a few bills, Norm. We'll be right back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trend. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, 
we're back, folks. We're talking with Norm Winsker of Astro Trends. Norm, you want to tell us uh, how the folks can reach you and what you're offering? Okay. Well, I'm going to just wrap it up real quick if I can. So I had one more point here on the dollar. You had a green point, a green arrow there for the dollar. Here's the moon for the currencies. There's your euro. Uh, it was close to a low, the low there on the euro. And keep in mind, we got a full moon coming up. But there's the moon there on the Japanese yen. That was a day early on the uh, bottom for the yen. Okay, here's a very important chart. This is my kind of my version of the Bradley model. And I've made some important uh, changes on the Bradley model that he did not talk about, which is why Bradley's model tends to invert and flip and drive people crazy. Notice here that I got Saturn turning direct back. This is a month ago. I do the, the blue line in advance. And my blue line turned there. Bradley's model would not turn there because Saturn was going direct. Plus, Saturn can not only turn the markets, it turns the energy, the polarity of the energy, and inverts it. And so that blue line was turned down as a forecast. And you can see a day later, that's where we topped out and we turned down. So that's very important. There's the moon there. Full moon stopped the momentum uh, going up. And then we kind of consolidated and we popped up one day after Saturn Direct and topped out and pull, had to pull back just like my blue line. I did the blue line several weeks in advance. There was the new moon there. And there's the full moon. So contact me. We're kind of running short on time. Here's what's coming up. Take a screenshot of this. You'll be covered for about a week. We got the full moon coming up here. Uh, round up the usual suspects. We got the grains, the financials, your precious metals. Uh, we got some more stuff with the U.S. And there's uh, Jupiter and so forth. Take a screenshot of this, and you'll be good to go. We got a huge thing coming up here. The sixth night of the 16th, similar to Labor Day weekend, when the bonds made their all-time high. I had only happened one time before, so I can't say for sure that that's what topped out the bonds. But I would be watching my uh, for major changes in the U.S. financials. All right, there we go. We got some special dates there for the uh, stock uh, stock market. Take a screenshot. And here we go. We got free classes, free letters. Contact okay. me next week. There's my contact information. And looking forward to helping some of you folks, Larry. And Thank you very much, day. Norm. Have a Let's nice start. day. You bet. You bet. See you tomorrow, folks. Uh -huh.